What's up guys, Rennis Rations here with you again, and it is International Military Ration Review Time. This is a monstrous 24-hour combat ration from Brazil. Brazilian MREs are pretty rare, and when you can get your hands on them, they are very expensive. The example that we're taking a look at today is especially interesting because it is actually a Brazilian Marine ration, meaning that this meal kit is for the Brazilian Navy. I can't wait to crack into this thing, but before we do, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you like seeing these military ration reviews here on YouTube. Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of my future content. And drop me a comment letting me know what ration you would like to see me review next. And now let's dive into a Brazilian Navy MRE. This thing is gigantic. It's labeled here, Marina da Brasil. Combat Ration Alternative, or RAC. This is a 24-hour meal kit, which means this ration is designed to feed a Brazilian Marine for a full day. We'll be checking out menu one, but as you can see, there are five menus of RAC. There is also a 12-hour version of this ration called the RAE. There are three menus for that one. We have some information about the company that packs the ration. Unfortunately, our package was cut into by customs, but luckily it was Brazilian customs, so I don't believe they took anything. Thing. Let's see what's included in here. Looks like we have three individual internal bags, a rather large accessory kit. We'll dig into that in just a second. And then two main food packs. This first pack contains both breakfast and lunch. And our other pack here contains dinner and supper. Most 24-hour military rations provide a soldier with three meals a day with maybe a few snacks to fill the gaps. But it seems the Brazilian Navy, at least, is getting four complete mills. This outside bag is a durable, heavy mill plastic. These inside packages are a lot more thin and sort of crinkly. Let's see what accessories are provided. In that we have a massive package of alcohol gel. This will be for heating the food contents. They include a unique little pack of matches here, a pack of napkins or tissues, that appears to be about a 10 count, a 55 gram Enjoy brand lemon sports drink, six pack, of water purification tablets, a foldable metal ration stove, and an instruction leaflet. Since our meals are individually packed, we'll open those as we move through the day. This ration will be all the food I consume for the next 24 hours, breakfast, lunch, dinner, and supper. And I think it's time for breakfast. So let's see what's in this breakfast and lunch pack. This is our lunch main entree, minced beef and sauce, a sort of dented in packet, of strawberry jam, an energy bar that I can't get to translate at all, two sugar packs, not sure why they're different colors, two packages of toast or biscuits, which feel like they're pretty crushed up, a 20 gram chocolate and strawberry fruit bar, a package of instant coffee. I believe this is a porridge of cassava flour. That's a very interesting item. Cafe Camlete, so a second coffee, and a packet of orange drink mix. So going by the breakfast contents list that they included, this is gonna be a very light meal. I figured this cassava porridge would be part of breakfast, but I guess we're not gonna get to check that out until lunch. This lemon sports drink was in the accessory package, so I suppose you can have it any time of day. We will do this one with breakfast. And so far this ration does not include any kind of eating device, so I'll be using a standard U.S. military MRE spoon. Let's take a look at this latte first. That powder is super light in color, and smell-wise, that is super milky. There was a lot of powder in there, but the directions only called for 150 mils of hot water, so I'll do my best to eyeball that. Looks like that's going to need substantial stirring. It started out a little chunky, but it's dissolving pretty quickly. Now that the hot water's hit it, the coffee aroma is coming through, and it has me salivating. It smells really good. Let's go straight in for a taste here. Wow, that is super unique. I was smelling coffee, but I don't taste coffee at all. I'm actually not convinced there's coffee in this. The taste, though, is outstanding. Standing. It is a mix of sweet and oddly enough salty, and those two together taste fantastic. Mm. It's super smooth and creamy, very sweet, so there's a lot of sugar in this, but there's also a substantial salty bite, which is making for a delicious morning beverage. It would be hard to devise a drink more comforting than this one is. Despite being from Brazil, this is giving me flashbacks to the Mongolian milk tea in my Mongolian military ration review. If you haven't seen that video, I'll link it up here for you. It has this delectable, sweet and salty, caramel-like thing going on. It's leaving a lot of residue in the glass, so perhaps there's a good deal of fat in this as well. I can't think of a better way to have started the meal. 
Mm, delicious. Now let's get our lemon sports drink mixed up before moving on to the food. Blindingly white powder. The directions on this say to prepare it with 500 milliliters of water. That powder has a citric acid kind of smell, sort of lemony and limey combined. That stuff is pretty darn chunky. Yeah, there's all kinds of undissolved stuff floating around in there. I guess we'll let that sit for a minute and revisit before we taste it. Finally, time for some food here. They gave us two 15 gram packs of toast. And as expected, it's basically croutons at this point. In some cases, more like breadcrumbs. Maybe the second pack is held up a little bit better. It's pretty well broken up too. This toast actually smells really nice. Distinctly sweet. It is very dry and of course toasted. I would assume these looked like little bread slices originally. Get a little toasty piece here. We'll give it a taste. It smells better than it tastes. I don't really expect much from toast anyway. It doesn't really seem to be salted on the spectrum of bread products. It is maybe just a little bit sweet, barely distinguishable. One thing I can say is despite being all broken up, it appears to be nice and fresh in both flavor and texture. Nice and crunchy. We're supposed to enjoy that with our strawberry jam here though. So let's get into this. So the jam is separated a little bit. We can see a little bit of syrup sort of pulling up. And then we have our jiggly strawberry jam. That is very sticky. And if we look at it really close, we can catch the glimpse of a little seed here and there. So there's a little bit of fruit actually in this. I'll give that a shot straight off the spoon first. Ooh, that is awesome. Super bright and punchy in its strawberry flavor. Tangy and super sweet. And the texture of this stuff is a very dense, sticky, Sticky gel, which is pretty delightful in my opinion. Let's see if it can make our toast shine. Nice little dollop there. Mm. That jam is so sweet. It makes this toast almost like a dessert. The crunch contrast the sticky gel very well. And that strawberry flavor is powerful enough to where it doesn't get watered down by the toast. Sadly, they didn't include nearly enough jam for all this bread. Now let's take another look at our sports drink. It is still darn chunky. There's all kinds of crap floating around in there. After all that toast, my throat is begging for a drink. So cheers. Mmm, that is tangy and sweet. This is most certainly a sports beverage because you can tell it's fortified heavily with electrolytes, which is giving it a distinct saltiness. All that powder has thickened the water slightly, but still a very refreshing beverage. The citrus flavor it has is pretty generic, but quite good. That is the perfect drink for staying hydrated on a hot day. Last breakfast item here is our strawberry chocolate bar. This thing is pretty darn small at only 20 grams and it is already broken up. Look at that, it's essentially a little cereal bar or granola bar, slightly pink with a flake of strawberry here and there. Seems to be chewy, a little bit sticky, and it's packed with oats and puffed rice down the hatch. That is both super soft it just kind of fell apart and chewy at the same time. Those oats add a lot of texture. It does have a slight strawberry flavor, but unfortunately that flavor is coming through very poorly. It's just very light of strawberry and I can barely taste the chocolate. More than anything, this is just a chewy granola bar with a good deal of sweetness. Not at all a bad item. Well, I'm gonna finish off my breakfast breadcrumbs here and then we'll move it straight over to lunch. Where breakfast was pretty small, it looks like lunch is actually gonna be pretty darn big. Our lunch entree is minced beef with sauce and rice. On the back of this cardboard package, they have a full ingredients list with a list of allergens and nutrition. They are using retort pouches, 150 grams of rice and 250 grams of beef with sauce. I completely intend to try out our alcohol fuel gel to heat up an entree later in the day, but for lunch I will be boiling our retort pouches. We will have a more conventional coffee with our lunch here. Pretty fine grain instant coffee powder in there. Doesn't seem to be all that much of it, so we're gonna go for a small cup here. Looks like pretty generic instant coffee. Definitely more of a powdered grain structure as opposed to freeze-dried crystals. 
That looks like a decent amount of water for that amount of powder. That's screaming hot though, so we'll have to give it just a minute before tasting. I truly have no idea what we're supposed to do with this cassava flour. Even the directions say to prepare as intended. Well, unfortunately, I have no clue what the intended preparation for cassava flour is. So if I screw this up, let me know about it down in the comments. This is a 40 gram package. Enjoy brand, just like many items we've run into in this particular ration. Well, there it is, cassava flour. Looks to be a pretty coarse grain. Looks a lot like cornmeal or our Southern United States delicacy grits. Smells a little bit like a rancid bread product. Not very appetizing. On the package there, they just show it in dry form, but I can only assume that you are supposed to rehydrate this stuff. I can't imagine eating it just like this. It's looking a little bit like an anthill here. Coarse and grainy. I guess we'll try it out dry. Hmm, it's nice and nutty. It wouldn't be impossible to eat like that, but there's no way you're supposed to eat it like that. So let's rehydrate this with a little bit of water. I don't want to put too much. Just started with the splash there, and I'll stir that in. Wow, it seems to be absorbing that liquid very quickly. It might need a good deal more than what I thought. At the moment, the texture's a lot like wet sand. That powder instantly became very thick and porgy, a lot like polenta or grits, sort of a cornmeal mash, even though of course this is cassava meal. It's putting off a very pleasant nutty aroma. Not really much to it. It might need some more water, but let's give it a try as it is right now. Mmm, yeah, that largely tastes like nothing. No seasoning whatsoever to speak of. No flavorings, dairy powders, no sugar, no salt. This is a blank slate to do whatever you would like with. And I think I would like to add some sugar to that. Now let's see if it's any better sweetened. Oh yeah, most certainly better that way. It still needs some fruit or creamer. A little bit of salt wouldn't be a bad thing. The only thing I can figure is that this is essentially a filler. It's included in the ration to cheaply fill your belly, to stave off hunger, and provide some decent energy with the carbohydrates. I've never encountered anything quite like it before, so it's super unique, but to my American palate, quite odd. Pretty cool experience. All right, now it is coffee time. Smells like a dark roasted instant coffee. Very bitter and very toasty. That's a super dark roast. I believe that's what you would describe as robust. Typically when I encounter a coffee like this one, the first thing I would be running to is some sugar. For now, we're just gonna enjoy the coffee black. It was the perfect amount for this tiny glass. Not so extremely strong, it's like espresso, but also not watered down. We have yet another drink to prepare. This is an orange beverage powder meant for 500 milliliters of water. This looks like it has a lot of real sugar in it, and that has a sharp artificial orange smell. The powder itself is a little bit clumpy. That is a tall glass of orange juice. That's dissolving a lot better than the lemon drink did. Our meal pouches are thoroughly heated break into this rice here first. Plain white rice, steaming hot. Doesn't appear to have any kind of seasonings or spices whatsoever. Just basic plain white rice. It may be overcooked just a little bit. The flavor should come with our beef and sauce though. It almost looks like soup. There is a thick layer of oil on top and this smells mouth wateringly good and savory. Oh man, this is gonna be awesome. Poured in right next to the rice here. It's a huge portion. So much in fact, it's barely even fitting in the tray. Let's get a bite of our plain rice here before we start mixing stuff. Plain old retort pouch rice. Very soft, a little bit starchy. It tastes a little bit buttery, not bad at all, and it is salted. So as far as plain rice goes, this is pretty good. It was described as being mince meat, but I would consider this more of a beef roast. I mean, look at the size of that meat chunk there. It appears to be spoon soft, and we are dealing with real non-processed meat. You can see the individual meat fibers there. There is a lot of this rich, oily brown gravy, but I can't spot any individual vegetables or anything. It's just meat and gravy, and of course our rice that we're serving it with. I think we'll start things out with a taste of the gravy by itself. Mm, yeah, man, that is good. And not foreign to my American taste buds at all. 
That is 100% roast beef cooking liquid. It is beefy and meaty, a little bit oily, slightly salty. It has a little acid kick to it. So I suspect the sauce may have some amount of tomato in it. You get a little bit of an oniony flavor on the background, but whatever vegetables this sauce did contain at some point have been so thoroughly cooked down that they have just become one with the sauce. Now let's get a piece of our beef here. This was half of the largest beef chunk. There's a little bit of fat on one end, but that's looking like a good piece of meat. Brazilian beef and sauce. Hmm, it's actually more chewy than I thought it would be. Stringy and chewy. The intramuscular fibers seem to have very little fat. And despite the meat being spoon tender, when you run into a large bite of it like that, it certainly has some chew. Now it's time to give it a try as intended. Beef, sauce, and rice. And tasting pretty darn fantastic. That's good stuff. Savory and filling, unctuously beefy, perfect balance of protein, fat, and carbohydrate. Really excellent stuff. I must say I'm pretty surprised. Time for some orange beverage. I really have worked up a thirst. Ooh, that is gritty. Very sour and very gritty. A little better after stirring, but the mouthfeel on that is just not pleasant at all. Super powdery, like an unmixed protein powder almost. Sure it's sweet and tangy, and the orange flavor is perfectly fine, but I do not like that texture at all. Now, I haven't a clue what this rapadura is, or, or perhaps it's hapahora in Portuguese. The translator came up with absolutely nothing, and likewise, I've never heard of it, but it appears to be a crumbly, little fruit bar. It's falling apart in the palm of my hand there. Smells very sweet, almost like dates. The texture on this is pretty odd, sort of soft and crumbly, like brown sugar. Get a little bite here. Okay, it has a molasses -y flavor, crystalline sugar texture. Things are starting to make a little bit more sense now. I'm almost certain this hapahora is supposed to pair up with our cassava flour here. That's the only thing that makes sense to me. This is so crumbly and sugary. I can only imagine it's supposed to be mixed with something else. The flavor this apple horror does have, I would describe as being like molasses. There's a lot of it, even for this decent sized portion of cassava flour. Let's get a little of our cassava flour with a little bit of that apple horror and try those two together. Hmm. Now we're in flavor town. The bitter, sweet, molassesy flavor of the hapahora sugar actually gives some substance to our otherwise pretty flavorless cassava flour. I still think this could use a little bit of salt to balance things out, but the cassava flour is much better with that added flavoring. Well, I'm going to devour the rest of my delicious lunch here, and when I manage to work up an appetite again, we'll be back with dinner. All right, let's see what our dinner and supper pack contains. It looks like we got another double entree pack. Spaghetti with meat sauce and sausages. A 250 gram retort for the spaghetti and a 100 gram pack for the sausages. Feels like there are two in there. A hot chocolate, two more packs of toast like we had for breakfast, two packs of sugar, another strawberry chocolate cereal bar, same as we had for breakfast. On first glance, I saw a purple drink and instantly thought ube, but it turns out this is a grape beverage mix, another instant coffee, 15 gram guava jam, and a pack of sugared gummy candies in what looks like a retail package. I promised you guys I would attempt to use the included ration stove and alcohol fuel gel. The stove is just a thin piece of sheet metal. Going by the directions here, it looks like we fold these long sides up and then the short sides. This metal is pretty thin, so I can see somebody getting cut on it, actually. And the figures four and five are kind of confusing. One of them says to fold the legs out, the other one says to fold them in. But we're going to go with folding them out. And that makes our ration stove. We're going to take the retort pouch for the entree, spaghetti, and meat sauce, and cram it down into this mess tin, cover that with water, and then open up our ample package of alcohol gel. Nifty little squeeze tube on this. Oh. Pretty thick. It's basically like hand sanitizer. Not quite sure how much to put. That looks like more than enough to get us started. We'll see if we can get that to catch with the included matches. Oh yeah, easy mode. I think this alcohol gel is probably the easiest lighting ration fuel I've ever come across. You can just barely see the flame because it is alcohol based. But what flame I do see is very high. We'll go ahead and take our full mess tin here 
and place that on top of our stove and give that time to heat up. In the meantime, I'll boil our sausages. Now I opted to heat this entree up in a water bath, but I have no doubt you could cook directly over this flame with a mess kit. All that supper would have consisted of is these five items. So I've made an executive decision to combine dinner and supper into one larger meal, especially because we've already checked out a couple of these items before. We'll mix up our hot chocolate first. Creamy looking powder, awesome sweet chocolate smell. Very fragrant powder that calls for 150 mils of hot water. Looking pretty chunky, but it is dissolving. I think our alcohol fuel is about played out. Yeah, it's just barely burning and the water is tepid at best. Gotta be really careful adding fuel to the fire here, but give it another little boost and back to heating we go. Let's get a taste of our hot chocolate here. Well, for one thing, it's still screaming hot. That's pretty delicious though. It is a little bit grainy where it hasn't completely dissolved. This has a pretty extreme level of sweetness. The chocolate flavor that it does have is more of a milk chocolate than a dark chocolate. It's rich and creamy. It coats the entire inside of your mouth with a decadent sweetness. This hot chocolate will be the perfect vessel to add some instant coffee to, but it's getting late and I don't need any more caffeine. Let's get a look at our grape drink here. Oh man, that is a strong artificial grape smell. Lots of sugar in there. Since our orange beverage was so powdery, I'm only gonna pour about half of the water first here and give it a really vigorous stirring. Look at that sort of violet grape color this has. And now that I've given it a good head start, we'll add some more water to it to reach the 500 mils it's supposed to be. We are finally achieving a few bubbles in our mess kit here. The sausages, which are very loose in their package, are completely heated at this point. So let's check these guys out. That looks like a glizzy. Smells a little bit smoky. One and two with just a little bit of liquid. Looks like a straight up hot dog to me and it is steaming hot. Look how springy the texture on this is. A synthetic looking hot dog casing stabbed into one here. Ah uh, yeah, homogenous mystery meat, a little bit pink looking, very soft, cuts easily with a spoon. Brazilian Navy dog, or what they're referring to as sausage. Let's give this thing a try. Hmm, so it is super soft, almost like a Vienna sausage. The flavor on this though, is both salty and smoky, which I actually find pretty pleasant. It has almost no chew. The extreme softness makes it very easy to eat. It would be really nice with some kind of condiment like some mustard or something. The distinct pink inside is slightly concerning, but if it's good enough for military use, I suppose it's good enough for me. Yet again, I must add more of our fuel gel. Maybe they're provided so much because it takes a lot to get the job done. And we lost the flame, so I must reignite it as well. Which was still very easy. Let's open up our third pack of toast. Crumbled up just as before. I'm really looking forward to this guava jam. Lovely consistency on that. Very sticky and gelled, just like the strawberry. The color's even similar. Doesn't smell like much. Let's get a taste on the spoon here. Oh, that is very different. Now that is flavorful stuff. It doesn't punch quite as hard as the strawberry did, but this is a completely different flavor profile. Still sweet and tangy, but the unique perfumed flavor of that guava really does come through, making this a very unique jam experience. We'll get a little bit on a piece of toast there. Yeah, that guava taste almost hits you in the nose before it does the mouth. Perfumey would be my best description, but in a good way. Thick and fruity, sweet and tasty, not bad on the toast. Again, I just hate how small the container is. We'll wash that down with some grape drink. That's pretty pleasant. It's not at all powdery like the orange was. It's quite smooth. Nice balance of sweet and sour. And despite having a very pungent artificial grape smell, the flavor is pretty mild. And that's not something I'm mad at. We never managed to achieve a boil on this water, but the retort pouch made it up to between 100 and 140 at the hotter spots. That's a decent eating temperature in my opinion. So we'll extract this and let's get a look at our spaghetti with meat sauce. The sauce looks like a big blob. Oh man, that looks interesting. Super wet. 
It sort of has that already eaten appearance. Now if we come in close on this, we can see there are little flakes of spices all throughout. The spaghetti noodles are cut very short. That's similar to a US MRE. It's not a bad thing when you're having to eat it with a spoon. This sauce is very thick and it is riddled with tiny little bits of minced meat. I can see a little bit of tomato peel there. This is certainly more of a stew-like consistency than it is your typical spaghetti with meat sauce. The aroma wafting off of this 100% reminds me of the US military spaghetti MRE. Let's see if it tastes any different here. She's not exactly a looker. Let's try that out. A little bit sweet. The noodles are almost inexistent. You get sort of a grainy texture from the very fine minced meat. You can taste that little bit of herbs and spices that the tomato sauce has. But if you set me down and gave this to me blind and I tasted it, I would tell you 100% this is U.S. military spaghetti because that, my friends, is exactly what this tastes like. We'll put a little bit on some toast here. That'll give it a little crunch. Flavor combo is a bit odd. Usually I'm not that big of a fan of a sweet spaghetti sauce. And this definitely leans in that direction, but I think they did pretty good on the level of sodium and overall seasonings. So it's not bland. It is, however, screaming out for a little bit of spice. Since we do have the two together, we'll get a little bit of our glizzy here with some spaghetti. That's almost like something you would get from Jollibee down the hatch. The smokiness of the hot dog really comes through. They're actually not bad mixed together. Last thing to try out is our gumdrop candy. Whoa, there's a lot of sugar in there. So we got a couple yellows, a few oranges, a few purples, one green, and a whole bunch of reds. Sugar-coated gummy candies. We'll give those two reds a try here first. Strawberry. I don't love strawberry candy, but the texture on those is great. Soft, yet chewy. Very sweet, of course. But all in all, not a bad candy. We'll try these oranges, too. Now, I like that orange better than the strawberry. Citrusy and bright, not bad. Well, guys, that was a Brazilian 24-hour naval military ration. This is the most expensive meal kit I've ever reviewed on the channel, and I'm glad that I decided to spend the money because I thoroughly enjoyed it and found it very interesting as well. Brazilian military food is as good as anything else I've tried from anywhere else in the world. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. That helps out with the algorithm and getting it distributed out to other viewers. If you know somebody else that might like content like this, Please be sure to share the video because that helps the channel grow more than anything else. Subscribe so you don't miss any of my future videos. And let me know down in the comments what you thought of the review and this Brazilian 24-hour RAC. I will catch you guys in the next video. See you then. Peace.